How is it going everybody? I actually just found something kind of cool by the boat ramp. If you didn't know, there's the boat ramp right outside our house. And if you're anything like me, um, when I talk on the phone, I pace. So went over to the boat ramp while I was talking on the phone and I saw something over there. And if it's what I think it is, it's pretty cool. And I think we can restore it. So let's take a walk over here and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So this is someone's old rusted skillet. There's usually a lot of trash over there. Um, whenever we come over here, we grab it and throw it in the pails. And I was looking down and I saw this. And it's not in that bad of shape, but it's a perfect opportunity to show you guys how to restore one. So let's bring it back to the backyard and we'll get started. It's a bit of a process, but it's worth it. I mean, this isn't, it's a lodge skillet, but why not? This will be fun. Something to do. <laughs> that gives me a lot of satisfaction for some reason. It's a lot of fun. Those finger snappers. Now we'll pop the salad. All right. So while Aaron's doing Aaron things, <laughs> we're going to get started on this skillet. The first thing that I need is white vinegar. So I'm going to get white vinegar and a container to put it in, and that is going to start reversing the, uh, the rust process. You could also electrify it with a car battery, but we're not doing that. Um, I'm going to run upstairs, grab what I need, and we'll throw it inside. So we want to do a 50-50 uh, vinegar to water mixture. I'm going to flip that over later, pour the vinegar on the back to straight vinegar, and we're going to let that sit at least an hour. You can let it sit overnight, but that acid in the vinegar will actually eat away at the rust and start the process for it so it won't be so bad scrubbing it. Also, the proper way to do this would be to have a container that is large enough to submerge the entire pot into it, but I'm working with what I have right now. So in an hour, I'll flip it over, I'll pour just straight vinegar on the back and we'll let that sit another hour. So like I said, this is gonna be a long process, but when it's all done and all seasoned, it's again, one of those things like sharpening your knife, taking care of your own utensils and bringing something back from the dead like this, it just, it feels better when you cook with it. So the vinegar's eaten away at the rust. And like I said, you could leave this overnight and you would get even better results. But if I go in my finger, the rust is already coming off pretty easily. So I'm going to dump this into my bucket there. I'm also doing this outside because inside it is a mess but I don't want too much of this stuff going into our canal. All right, so the next step now, we have to stop that vinegar. So I have here baking soda. So we just put a little bit of that on. And now I go in with Brillo. Steel wool work, one of those big steel scrubbies sandpaper it depends it depends how bad your cast iron is this one doesn't have any big flakes coming off so this should be not that big of an issue so if you come in oh, i messed it up <laughs> hold on let me get some water We're already down to the iron. Right there, you can see it. So, 
I got about 30, 40 minutes of scrubbing ahead of me. I'm not gonna torture you and make you watch that. But you wanna scrub every single part of this. Get the rust off of the handles, inside there, underneath. We're gonna scrub the whole thing and then move the party upstairs where I'll show you the next couple of steps. It's pretty cool. You can see, I keep spraying that. That's the actual. So that was the seasoning that was on there before. We want even the black to come off. We want everything off. We want to start with a blank slate. It's just time consuming. All right, worked out quite the sweat <laughs> scrubbing this thing. Next time I think I'm gonna use a Dremel and a wire brush, but we got all the rust off, all of the old coating. There's still a tiny bit of the old coating on there, but that's okay. Um, that's not bad actually. I just wanna make sure the rust is off. But now because it's wet, we wanna make sure that it's dry. So what I'm gonna do is put it on top of the stove for about a minute on high heat. That's gonna dry it out completely. And then we'll start doing the first coat of oil. Okay, this has been on here just long enough to completely dry out. It's not even hot to the touch, just warm. So we'll take that off. And now if you notice, there's a thin layer of rust on there again. That's okay. That's how quickly this iron is oxidizing. That's not a problem. That's gonna come off when we do this coat of oil. Now I like to use canola oil. You could use flaxseed oil. Do not use just regular vegetable oil. Do not use uh, olive oil. You need something with a high fat content. And what you do is put on a healthy amount and then with paper towels, start rubbing the entire pan. And you're gonna do this until the paper towel comes off not black anymore. It's gonna stop after a few times. And it will also stop our pan from oxidizing in the air right now. But make sure you get the handles, inside the handles, everywhere, everywhere on the pan. You could also do this with a rag to save yourself on the paper towels. But look how beautiful that already looks and we haven't even seasoned it yet. Now we'll get the inside. Now, even though Lodge isn't the greatest brand of cast iron, it's not a bad brand. And the coating that it comes with is okay. But even those, I kind of like to take that coating off and do my own coating. So you can turn even a cheap cast iron into a really, really good cast iron. Or if you're at a thrift store and find an old vintage cast iron, they'll be pretty cheap and you can turn it into almost a brand new cast iron. And with enough coating, it'll have very nonstick qualities. It won't get, be completely nonstick, but it'll be pretty darn close. All right, I'm gonna do that a couple more times, like I said, until my paper towel comes off white. Now that I've gone through those steps a couple of times, it's coming off clear. We're gonna add another coat of oil this is our last one. And again, make sure you get the handle inside the handle, all every nook and cranny inside our skillet. And now grab a new paper towel. We're going to wipe that very, 
very thin. Don't worry, it's on there. But like I said, if done correctly, this is a long, labor-intensive process of love. But that is okay, because we're gonna have a brand new skillet to cook with. So you want a very, very light sheen. You can see that. It's not dripping. Just nicely, nicely coated. We're gonna do the same thing inside. Okay, and into the oven she goes. We're gonna put it in the oven, top side down, and you wanna put a pan in the oven to collect any oil that drips, but because it's such a thin coat that we put on there, it's not gonna drip. So we're gonna set our oven to 500, put this inside, And I put that in before the oven was even up to 500, we put it in cold. So now once that hits 500, start a timer for one hour. And then we're gonna repeat this at very least two times. The more you repeat it, the better the seasoning on the pan, the better the pan is gonna be non-stick or the more the pan is gonna be non-stick. So we're gonna do at least two for video's sake, but normally I would do three or four. My timer went off, it's been one hour. Also, let the stove and the pan cool down so that it's not ripping hot when you break it out. It's also good to let it cool down in the oven because again, it's assuring that that coat is on there. Look at that. And that, that is only one coat. So we are going to let this completely cool down and then do the process over again. Do another coat, wipe it off completely, like I said, very, very light, put it in the oven, top side down, 500 degrees, another hour, let it cool, and I'll meet you back here. After round two, we are looking pretty good and seasoned. Now, like I said, I'm gonna do it probably two more times. Not tonight, I'm gonna do it another night because it takes an hour and then about 30 minutes to cool down each time. So one of the things you can do to preserve your pan after you have seasoned it, when you go to put it away, put a light coat of oil on it. Just a light, light coat, wipe it off. And the other thing is never use dish soap after you cook with it, treat it like a wok. After you cook in it, wipe it out. If you need to get something that's stuck inside of it off, pour a little bit of coarse salt in with a paper towel, rub the salt and take it out. Quick rinse, a little bit of oil, and then you throw it. I keep them in the oven and it keeps them nice and beautiful and you will have this for the rest of your life. So this is something I found around the corner. We brought it back and in an upcoming episode, I'll cook something in it for you. But all right, guys, that does it for me. Like this episode, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.